Okay. So let's um, talk a little bit about styles. So we're going to talk about learning styles and homeschool styles and um, how that could apply to your homeschool. So Jen, why don't you guys get us started and talk okay. about learning styles here? Yes, most people are going to fall into one of three categories um, for learning. It might be visual learners, auditory learners, or the kinesthetic learners. There are other subcategories where you could identify um, more specifically, but in general, these are the three um, big groups you would look to. Um, visual learners, we can start there. They are the ones who need to see what you're talking about. Um, they'll want diagrams, written directions. They may want um, to make a list, check things off, that kind of thing. But if they see it, it's more cemented in their minds. So isn't like traditional school is pretty much geared towards a visual learner. It would be a lot say, of visual learning. Right? This is a lot of board so work. Used to, book, book work, work yeah. board work, worksheets. Work, books, yeah. worksheets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another category for a learning style might be auditory, where you need to hear it to understand it better. Um, so they're going to want um, to read aloud, to be read to. They may need to hear things several times. They might prefer to memorize things like with music or with you know rhymes and that kind of thing. They enjoy group discussions and any type of like video that you can use that they can listen to and hear it and process it that way. One of the biggest things I think we have to learn in homeschooling our kids is that they may not have the same learning style that we do. Yeah. So while my preference might be quiet reading time, my son's is not. It might be <laughs> loud active reading, but he is understanding right. and, and gaining the information that I'm hoping he'll get. So right. it's important to remember it might be a little different. And then the other category is the kinesthetic learner, which would be more the, the busy, need something in my hands to understand it, um, touch it, feel it, act it out, even um, kind of thing is helpful for them um, mm -hmm. when they're learning. So and they, and they seriously cannot listen if they're trying to hold still. Right. Because mm -hmm. I had one like that who mm -hmm. he tried so hard to hold still, but he couldn't pay attention to anything I was saying unless I let him roll around the floor or have a ball in his hand mm -hmm. where he could do this or you know be building something yeah. and then he could tell me any and it seemed like he wasn't paying attention but if i stopped and asked him questions he could repeat exactly what i said yeah but he had to be moving in order that for that to happen and when he got older he got to, where he knew i can do this for a certain amount of time then i have to go run around the house right <laughs> then i have to go shoot baskets then yeah. i have to do something you know so yeah, those, those, are, my those are the basic yeah, learning styles. But that's that's just something that if you can find materials that go with your child's learning style, it makes it much easier for them to learn. Yes, if you can identify some of their strengths, some of their challenges, and you can then you're able to better suit a curriculum or materials that you choose to use in your homeschooling instead of just hoping that one you purchase works and making it fit, it's more beneficial to know your kids' learning yeah. styles and find a curriculum or materials that will fit them. Do you know any good sources for finding, for finding out about learning styles? I know there's an old book that I had when my kids were starting called The Way They Learn that we used, or I read to kind of help me understand learning styles. I've read The Way They Learn because you told me to read it. <laughs> See, just keep reading it was on. very that helpful works. yeah and then it was very yeah. helpful to me too yeah, yeah. i know there's yeah. websites and stuff that go into that too yeah that's in more my direction just looking online and reading through like there's quizzes you know, and things you mm -hmm. can and you there's can so do. many little micro microisms of each you know um category. category yeah so and children will sometimes often actually most of us have more than one learning style, but we're very strong in one, right? Mm -hmm. Or strongest in one, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't learn visually right. or through an audiobook right. or through Legos. It just means you may have a strength towards one over right. others. But and it's be. usually the new material that you're trying to learn <clears throat> comes easier when you're going with your strongest learning style. Yeah, and it also just makes it happier. Yeah, you know, that's it's true. Not, not so much just, struggle. Yeah. If it's not just drudgery for them, you know, it's presented in a way that they can understand it better. Right. Yeah. So just encouraging, we encourage everybody to just do a little exploration into mm -hmm. that before you decide on a curriculum 
or you might need to change a curriculum if it's not working mm -hmm. and that might be something to look into and we have a store locally where you can go and put your hands on materials and get advice there and sit at a table and open several different things and compare them so if you have a resource near to you to be able to do that or friends who homeschool where you could go and check out some of their things before you make a big like box purchase of some sort, mm -hmm. go put your hands on it. Make sure it's going to be a good fit for your family. Yeah. It's, a, it's an investment to get curriculum. All right. So let's move on to um, talk about homeschool styles and just the different um, ways that people homeschool um, because there are, many different approaches and educational philosophies that people choose and that would affect what kind of curriculum you would get or how you would use the whatever curriculum you have mm -hmm. one obviously what we all know if we went to public school the traditional textbook approach to curriculum where mm -hmm. you have textbooks workbooks it might be on the computer um, tests tests quizzes Mm -hmm. um, that kind of where things are broken down into daily lesson plans mm -hmm. and um, you, know, you this follow is, a schedule. This is what a lot of people have been trying to do at home mm -hmm. because of COVID-19. So if you take like the traditional approach and the distance learning and you have put the two together, that's what I think has made schooling harder in the past few months for people who do school mm -hmm. outside of their home. Um, so taking the traditional approach is trying to kind of recreate school at home. So you may have a desk, like a dry erase board, those types mm -hmm. of things um, that you are using and you have to decide if that's a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. um, if your kids thrive on textbooks and they work well on their own and they can you know, learn that way, um, then you can go for it. But if you're not the kind of person who wants to keep up with a pace that somebody else is setting for you, then that might not be the right approach. One of my favorites is a unit study approach, or some people refer to it as studying themes, mm -hmm. um, where you choose a topic and then you sort of build your materials around that. So you would choose maybe a book and then you would create history lessons, language arts lessons, science lessons, art, music, all those um, subjects um, around it to support um, what, your, what your goals are for that unit study. So like an example might be, you can do a, a unit study with any little house on the prairie books. Um, would be mm -hmm. an example. Really yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. There's a and there's a whole unit study curriculum written around the Little House in the Prairie books yes. that we used one year called Prairie Primer. Yes. But you read the books and then you study bears or bees or mm -hmm. you know how to make butter. To make, right, all kinds yeah. of different yeah. things yeah. that you take these little journeys off the side. There's also like a curriculum called Five in a Row, where they've taken. A book and you read it at least five times in a row that's the name but children's books right? children's yeah. books that you're reading which they've gone up to like even middle school grades yeah. now so it just depends on that's the beauty of it you can take the book and you can um, accelerate it to the level of learning that you want it to be but you would take the book and then they offer um, a guide that would give you ideas for science math social studies language arts vocabulary and those kind of things yeah. so Another popular one is classical um, and classical conversations is a learning community that is very popular among homeschoolers um, where they actually meet together once a week with um, teachers who teach the curriculum and the kids work at home during the week, but it's using the classical approach to education. And there are a lot of curriculums written that way, but um, classical education tends to be academically rigorous and emphasizes language skills, reasoning, logic, um, memorization. memorization in the younger ages, mm -hmm. and then uh, debate skills as they get older, writing skills. So there's typically a lot of reading involved in a, in a classical approach, a lot of writing. And again, it, it divides learning into stages. So the young stage, when the children are, are you know, early years, ages five to 10, they're focusing a lot on memorizing, memorizing mm -hmm. the grammar rules and the uh, spelling rules and the names of the presidents and the states and the capitals and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and then moving into a logic stage for middle school and rhetoric stage for the upper years when they're starting to then 
take that information and and put it together, use it, uh, integrate it into projects, and then re reword it and write and speak on subjects. And um, mm -hmm. again, it's based on the old classical approach to education from you know the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing that I really like um, amongst the homeschool styles is just the delight directed. Um, studies. I think that it's just so nice, especially if you're pulling your kids from a public school environment. Um, it's really nice to just take that time to see how different school can be. You know, let them pick a topic. They, you know, whatever love dolphins and, you know, just let them study that and study it in depth as much as they want and, you know, have a little time doing those sort of things. Even if you're doing other types of curriculum, I just think it's really, really nice. Um, it builds a love of learning. Right. I think. You've mentioned Charlotte Mason, so let's talk about Charlotte Mason a little bit. Because um, that's an approach that, again, some curriculums are designed around or people mm -hmm. use parts of her ideas. Um, Charlotte Mason was a turn of the century what was it early 1900s, early 1900s. Um, British educator and her book series on education a lot of homeschool um, schoolers have taken her ideas because she had some unique ideas about education and young children um, she talked about using living books mm. as opposed to textbooks and living books would be any book that was written by a single author on a single topic or a topic rather than a ser you know, a committee writing a textbook that included lots of little things. And she called uh, twaddle was her word for books that were just not, you know, that were compilations, but mm -hmm. that using living books would inspire more of a love of the top of learning because someone who was really interested in that topic wrote that book. Mm -hmm. um, so not using textbooks or workbooks, but using living books um, on topics, emphasizing narration and copy work. Nature study is a big part of Charlotte Mason education. Mm -hmm. um, real life application, life skills. Also, uh, short lessons is one of her things, which my kids like that idea. That, but for young children especially, and, and kids who are easily distracted, keeping things short and then having a break right. is all. A good idea. There's a um, lot of focus on being outside. Lots of outside, outside time, nature mm -hmm. study, and spending and good habits I think is another thing that just training children in good habits. Yeah. So um, there are books on her style of education and groups and co-ops and things centered around homeschooling that's mm -hmm. based on her theories. You have to really but, enjoy books. Mm -hmm. and um, do the work to find a quality book mm -hmm. that would support the things that you're learning about. Yeah. And there is a guide for Charlotte Mason Learning. It's called Ambleside Online, and it's a free it's a free curriculum. You just have to learn how your family fits in that guide and what, you know, where you would start from there. So. Yeah. I said some people, if you read about these styles, a lot of times one of them is really going to just, mm -hmm. if, if it's something that you go, oh, that sounds like me, or that's something something my kids would love, then it's a good way to right. kind of, well, let's explore that more, you yeah. know, because there's some things that are going to turn some people off and really inspire somebody else. So it's very true. And it might change too. Mm -hmm. This year, maybe this kind of, you know, homeschool and next year you may go into something totally different. So it's not always a mm -hmm. um, ongoing, you know, mm -hmm. we don't have to choose one way mm -hmm. and that be it and see that. Another um, is unschooling. So unschooling is a word that some people hear and have different interpretations it scares of what that them. means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It means we don't do school. That's not what it means. No. No. It really means that you're allowing your child to, like we talked, you know, mentioned just a minute ago, let your kids lead in what they want to learn about. Mm -hmm. And then you just support them and help them with the wins, the where's, the hows, the groups, the libraries, the videos, the books, whatever it is that helps them learn. You're more of the facilitator in their learning instead of the primary instructor. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you just let them learn and study, you know, the things that they're interested in. And it really then means that you're incorporating school is into your life. It's not, homeschooling is not something you do. That should be the case, I think, with any of these curriculums. It's not something you do. It's a way of life. It's the way that you live. It's the rhythms of your home. And so um, just recognizing that cooking, playing outside, the nature walks, the, you know, the books that you're reading together, all those things are supporting learning. So it is school. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you're not doing any school. Right. And I think unschooling as a parent, it doesn't mean that you just step aside and let the kids, it, your role is to create a rigid learning environment right. with lots of, of tools and opportunities for your kids to explore different things. And like you said, if they're interested in birds, then you're going to find those things to help them. You know, you're going to set up a birdhouse and you're going to get the books and you're, you're going to host a bird the, club when you don't know anything about the, birds. Join, that's right. You're going to, <laughs> you're going to do you're the going things to that help them, you know, enjoy right. learning what they're loving. But mm-hmm. you're going to help support the things that they want to learn by providing groups and opportunities and places to visit and things that'll help. Um, and you have to be comfortable with a little less structure, yeah. you know, because that's, you know, if you make it too rigid, it's going to hinder mm-hmm. the, you know, the goals here. So, um, but if your family loves to learn, if they're naturally curious, if they're, if you just enjoy being together and doing, you know, learning, then that could be a good fit for you. My favorite approach is eclectic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think a lot of, a lot of people end up finding out they're, they're an eclectic homeschooler, which means they just use a little bit from a lot of different methods because again, depending on what you're studying or the year that you're having or the ages or whatever, mm-hmm. um, you're going to change as time goes on or for different circumstances, but eclectic, it just allows you to choose whatever mm-hmm. floats you about at the moment, you know, what works yeah. and um, choose from a variety of sources and schools of thought. So a lot of people combine, um, Another one that I, I, I find very intriguing, this is not me, Don, I could see you being a world schooler and if, if you had the opportunity, if you're going to be starting <laughs> Travel again. Travel around the world mm-hmm. and, so, yes. Yeah, so world mm-hmm. schooling, it's a thing. And if you, there are families who have Instagram pages and, and YouTube pages where they document, but it's a, an approach to education that involves travel. Mm-hmm. And it's not just going on a vacation once a year. It is... It's your way of life. It's yeah. typically a way of life where you're doing long-term, long-trip travel, global travel. But um, world schoolers can be unschoolers, but they can also be more traditional schoolers and have curriculum they carry along with them. But mm-hmm. they are um, usually unified in the idea that the world is their classroom mm. and exposure to people, cultures, places all around the world is is what they want their children to to grow up with yeah. and um it's a very cool thing to mm-hmm. to watch i know a couple the i know one the, family uh, the yeah. able to i mean i would do it i know one family know. who's been doing so this awesome. for a couple of years they just covid brought them back so they're here for a while but their kids are like 10 and under <laughs> so i mean young kids just mm-hmm. they're world travelers they could go anywhere talk to anybody that's pretty Amazing. cool. Yeah. I found that especially cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Traveling for. Yeah. 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 so awesome. <clears throat> the only thing we haven't talked about is the distance learning mm-hmm. or computer based, if we want to mention anything about that, um, where you can actually have your entire curriculum or you can um, sign up for individual classes um, that you can do online. So you may have help with the grades and record keeping and transcripts and that kind of thing. Um, somebody else is evaluating your schoolwork. Yeah. And there are some others like the Montessori. There, there's mm-hmm. a, a group of, you know, there's people who pursue Montessori education um, or Waldorf or there's some others out there. So if you continue to look into homeschooling styles, you'll find others too. I think we've hit the main ones, mm-hmm. yeah. the majority. The other, the other thing um, I wanted to touch on is the religious versus secular, mm. because that's part of you know any curriculum. There are certain curriculums that are written from a Christian worldview or a secular worldview, or a you know, there are a lot of different worldviews out there. So choosing curriculum, I think we need to be 
you need to be mindful yeah. of the values and the truths that are included and if that matches what your family believes so um you know for many families i know for us we're a part of a christian homeschool organization um having a christian environment for our children and raising them um that way that's important yeah. to us so the the materials that we choose to use and the things that we do with our children during the day and how we teach and how we approach things we're coming from a, a christian worldview and so for someone who you know whatever your um your faith is or the things that you think are important you know as homeschoolers that's part of what we the benefit is we get to um, make that part of every day mm -hmm. with our kids. Everything that we're doing, we're supporting those um, values and um, discipling our kids, right? As as we walk through every day and the things that we're doing. But for for whatever you know, as you're looking at curriculum, you, that those are that's a factor mm -hmm. to look at how it's presented and what materials are being taught and how they're being taught, what the basic assumptions of truth are. Definitely do your research. Don't just take it word of mouth or a Facebook comment recommended. Maybe this will be a good bit. Like do your own research mm -hmm. to make sure it lines up with your worldview and the things that you want to be um, mm -hmm. instilling in your children's lives and minds for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. there's no one body of information that every teacher passes to a student. I mean, no matter what school you're in, no matter what curriculum you use, I mean, it's, there's too much out there. We'll never teach our children everything. So we are picking and choosing. Everyone is picking and choosing what's important. And, you know, each family could have a different set of skills and information they think is most valuable. Mm -hmm. and it might be different than what your family mm -hmm. chooses as most valuable. And, and that's why I think most of us figure out as we go along, what we really want is for our kids to learn how to learn. Yeah, and love learning. Right? right. That they like, that they, right. the process of learning is enjoyable and that they know how to find out whatever it is they need to know. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, they're gonna to have to learn things that we didn't teach them. Mm -hmm. And do they know how to, you know, to research? Do they know how to get on the computer and find information and tell whether it's a good source or not? Do they know? how to teach themselves a new subject, something they need to do, so. Yeah, it becomes very important, really, um, as you know also, when they get into a college atmosphere, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, speak intelligently about a subject and look up what is our truth, you know, mm -hmm. um, because that's not always what they get there. Mm -hmm. And right, there are things that they're gonna come across and. and I think a reason a lot of homeschools, homeschoolers do succeed in college and beyond is because they have had that experience already growing up <clears throat> that they've had to become independent learners and mm -hmm. have learned how to find information. And, um, you know, like I said, it's important to me that my children enjoy learning. So that's something that's always part of what yeah. I, you know, what I'm thinking as we're doing things. Okay, if this is miserable for all of us, we gotta find a different way to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. school shouldn't be something you hate. School, I mean, it might be the way, you know, we don't always like doing math. I, I will never like doing math, but there are ways to approach it that are much more enjoyable for me yeah. than for others. Yes. And each of my kids had sort of a different way of doing things. So that whole learning style where one of them was like, just give me the math problems and don't make me do a puzzle. And the other one was like, please, can I have puzzles and pictures and things besides just math problems? So, I mean, yeah. couldn't use the same book. Mm, right. Because <laughs> right? it was torture for one and the other one loved it. So those, just, mm -hmm. the, just the way that you're delivering information can help make or break things. So true. And you don't stop learning when you graduate, even mm -hmm. from college. We should be lifelong learners and we should be instilling that desire to love and read and learn and continue being curious. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm getting the chance to do it all over again. 
right. and fill in some of the gaps that I had and learn right. some things with my kids. And, you know, sometimes when it's not going as I thought it would, it's a mom issue and I need a reset in some way. And sometimes it is what we're doing is just not clicking the way I envisioned and we have to make a change. And it doesn't mean that we didn't do it right or that we cannot homeschool. We're, we're failing at it. Well, and it we're modeling for our children that yeah. we still have to learn things, right? right? That yes. you're always yeah. learning things and that I'm not always going to know the answer, but let's go find out. Right. Let's go find out how, what that answer is. I don't know it, but let's go find out. Mm -hmm. and, and also in the way that fits their personality, you know, they may not ever, some kids are just never going to be people who will go pick up a book and read it. Right. But they may pick a film or, you know, an audio book and right. realize that, you know, they love to learn, but they just don't like staring at the page. Right. My son does not care for math. It's his least favorite thing to do. We typically start with that so that it's done. But he loves trivia. And so we learned multiplication this past year by trivia games. We would just use post-it notes and poster boards. I would have them ready and he would just do it that way. And so teaching them to love learning and not dread what has to be accomplished, but to accomplish it well and have learned it is important.